Benzocaine is a topical anesthetic that finds a wide variety of uses in medicine, and today I'm going to make some. This process is actually pretty easy, and you really only need three ingredients. The first ingredient is called para-aminobenzoic acid, or PABA, which is weirdly enough sold as a nutritional supplement. The second ingredient is anhydrous ethanol, which I've made before on this channel, and the third is concentrated sulfuric acid, which I've also made on this channel. To actually make benzocaine, what I want to do is add 7.2 grams of the PABA and 72 milliliters of the ethanol to a boiling flask. I then slowly and under constant stirring add my sulfuric acid, and this is done because when sulfuric acid dissolves it produces a lot of heat and I don't want to boil away my ethanol. In this case, the sulfuric acid will actually react with the PABA and form an insoluble complex, but don't worry about that, it's totally normal. I then set this up for reflux in my heating mantle and crank the heat all the way up. What's happening now is the acid catalyzed fissure esterification between the ethanol and the paraminobenzoic acid. In the first step of this reaction, the carbonyl oxygen is protonated by the sulfuric acid catalyst, activating it toward a nucleophilic attack from the ethanol. When this happens, a lone pair of electrons from the oxygen atom of the alcohol form a bond with the carbonyl carbon, breaking its pi bond to the other oxygen. The pi bond electrons then move up the oxygen and neutralize its positive charge, which results in an oxonium ion. After that, a proton transfer occurs from the oxonium ion to the OH group, giving rise to an activated complex. This activated complex is a highly unstable tetrahedral intermediate which is then going to break down with the elimination of water. This happens when a lone pair of oxygen forms a pi bond with carbon which will expel the water. This results in our ester but with an extra hydrogen on it which is actually given up to regenerate our sulfuric acid catalyst. This reaction is not reversible and when the solution turns clear, it's done. Now to actually isolate my product, the first thing I want to do is neutralize all my excess sulfuric acid with sodium bicarbonate. To do this, I mix up a 15% sodium bicarbonate solution and slowly add it to my mixture until no more bubbling occurs. At that point, all the excess sulfuric acid should be neutralized to sodium sulfate and the pH should be around 8. I would also recommend in hindsight to let this mixture cool in an ice bath before adding the sodium bicarbonate. This is because benzocaine is soluble in water at elevated temperatures, and it won't immediately crash out if the solution is too hot. Because my solution here is still pretty warm, it was completely clear at the end of this step and I had to let it cool down for a while for the benzocaine to actually precipitate. I suppose though that one advantage of this is that it formed nice looking crystals without me having to do a recrystallization, so that was nice I guess. In any case, after the beakers cooled down and my benzocaine precipitates, I now need to filter it off, and I'm going to do this by vacuum filtration. This can also be done with a simple coffee filter, but the vacuum filter is a lot faster and since I have it, I might as well use it. Once the product is done filtering, I want to rinse it thoroughly with ice cold water to get rid of any residual sodium sulfate or unreacted reagents. I then transfer my product to a drying dish and let it dry overnight in a vacuum desiccator. This leaves me with a final mass of benzocaine of 5.96 grams which represents a 69% yield, which is okay but I think it could have been better. Now I don't normally do this but I did sample this chemical and it does numb your mouth very very effectively. It was kind of weird actually. In any case, that's the entire process, I hope you found this interesting or informative, and if you like this content and you'd like to see more like this, consider following me on TikTok, YouTube, or Instagram. You can also become a patron on Patreon, but subscribing to my YouTube is a really good way to fund this work without giving a dime, so if anything, I recommend that. Thank you.